In this video, we're going to have a look at the interpretation and sketching of global graphs. And for that, we're going to make use of the terminology that we discussed in the previous video. Example one, the graph below shows a runner's time in minutes versus his distance from the starting point in kilometers. Question A, is this a graph of discrete or continuous data? This is definitely continuous data because the distance is measured and the points on the graph are connected. Question B. How long did it take the runner to complete the first two kilometers? Remember that a graph shows you the relationship between two variables. In our case, distance and time. Here we are given that it is about the first two kilometers, so the distance is given and from our graph, we can then go and read what time it took. And in this case, the answer will be 30 minutes. Question C. What is the maximum distance the runner was from the starting point? The maximum distance is the highest point on the graph. And here, the runner was at the same height, or in this case, distance from the starting point, for a while. And here we can see that that distance was 5 kilometers. So in this time interval from 60 to 70 minutes, the runner stood still and probably rested. After this, you can see that the distance now decreases. This means that the runner turned around and is on his way back to the starting point. Question D. How long after the runner turned around did he get back to the starting point? I've now already mentioned that he turned around at 70 minutes. Here he started moving back and he was back at the starting point with a distance of zero after 120 minutes. So it took him from 70 to 120 minutes to run back and that is a total of 50 minutes. Question E. How far did the runner run in total? This runner started and ran a distance of 5 kilometers from his starting point. Then he turned around and went all the way back for another 5 kilometers, meaning that he ran 10 kilometers in total. Question F. Determine the speed of the runner in kilometers per minute for the time interval of 30 to 40 minutes. We need to calculate the speed in kilometers per minute, so the calculation will be to divide the total amount of kilometers by the minutes that he ran. Here we can see that it started at 2 kilometers and ended at 4 kilometers, which means that in this time interval he ran 2 kilometers. The number of minutes is from 30 to 40 minutes, which is 10 minutes. And now 2 divided by 10 is 0, 0,2 kilometers per minute. Question G. For which time interval is the graph decreasing? On a graph, decreasing means as we read from left to right, the graph is moving downwards. And that will be the interval from 70 to 120 minutes. Example 2. The graph below gives the average temperature for the Western Cape for each month of 2016. First question. Is the graph linear? or nonlinear. Here we can clearly see that it's not possible to draw one straight line between all the points. Therefore, this graph is nonlinear. Question B. Name the dependent variable. The dependent variable will always be on the vertical axis, so in this case that will be the average temperature. Question C. In which month was the average temperature the lowest? And what was that temperature? Here we are looking for the minimum point. And in this case we can see that that minimum temperature happened in June. And when we read on the vertical axis, that temperature was 17 degrees. Question D. Calculate the difference between the highest and lowest average temperatures. We already know that the lowest temperature was 17 degrees 
and our highest temperature, the maximum, is 31 degrees. So the difference between these two temperatures is 14 degrees. Example 3. The starting temperature of water in a kettle is 18 degrees Celsius. When the kettle is turned on, the temperature increases at a steady rate for 3 minutes until it reaches 100 degrees. It boils for 30 seconds and then switches off. After 2 minutes, the temperature of the water in the kettle has cooled to 76 degrees Celsius. First question, is the data discrete or continuous? Because the degrees are measured, the data is continuous. Question B. Use the information to draw a suitable graph. When drawing a graph, you should always start by adding a heading and naming your axes. I'm going to make this heading the temperature of water in a kettle and my horizontal axis, which will be my independent variable, will be the time that passes in minutes. On my vertical axis, I always have the dependent variable, and here that will be the temperature in degrees Celsius. Next, it is important to determine whether you should connect these points or not. We've just mentioned that this is continuous data, which means you will have to connect the dots. Here we were given that the starting temperature of the water is 18 degrees Celsius, and that means that before any time has gone by, we will start at 18 degrees. Then the temperature increases at a steady rate, which means it will form a straight line. And this happens for three minutes until the water reaches 100 degrees Celsius. This means my next point will be three minutes later, and then the temperature is 100 degrees. Now I can connect these two points with a line. Now the water boils for 30 seconds and then switches off so it stays constant at 100 degrees for another half a minute. Until three and a half minutes it now stays at 100 degrees. Then after two minutes the water has cooled down to 76 degrees. So from three and a half minutes, two minutes later will be five and a half minutes. And then the water is at 76 degrees. Now we just need to connect the last two points and then the graph is complete.